Hi, I'm Paul Roberts and this is Conscious Counseling 101, video number two in this short little series of deciding to and raising children. The last video was all about what it took to decide to have children versus not. A 10 year process, a lifelong process if you will. And I hinted on uh, how we had a boy first and a girl second. Maybe I'll get into that, maybe I won't. But we decided we'd have children if God was willing and we named him Max. I don't know how private and personal I want to get here because it'll go into how we had a boy first, but suffice it to say, we never thought of having one until we got to this 10 year period. We had this extension of faith, this leap of faith from all that we had studied together and come to, from all that man has seen and known and felt about the Creator, we decided it would be better for this person to be in this world than to not. And better for that person too. Not just for the world, not just for us, but better for that person. We had to make sure we were resigned to the fact that this person would have everything we could give them, even though we don't have limitless means. And that's what we've done. Now, let me give you the prescription or the recipe. And if you were going to talk to me about uh, counseling about your children, I'd, uh, I'd say, well, you didn't use this recipe, so all I can do is take it from wherever you have it and try to get you to point it in the right direction. But let me give you our recipe. Okay. So back in the old days, I never watched this show, but the greatest American hero, uh, you know, he had this suit that was given to him by aliens, and uh, he, he could have superhero powers, but unfortunately, he lost the directions, the instruction manual, and he didn't know how to use it. I never watched the shows, but the, the concept was cool. Well, I came into this thing with my wife where we were going to have this agreement that the world would be made better if our children would embrace the Creator's plan and take what that Creator would give them, would will up in them, and uh, they'd become worthwhile citizens and help lead the world. Now, in order for that, I did not know the instructions. I did not know what to do. At that time, I was on some of the bulletin boards um, and getting into the community a little bit. I was speaking on the internet with people. It wasn't like so fragmented like it is now. And one of the people uh, I was uh, speaking with was an atheist. But this was this was even before the, the atheist came a little bit later. That gave me more conviction. But I needed a, a, a plan for the for the children or for the child that would be one that the Creator would approve of. And I looked outside of myself and I said, what's the greatest plan, what's the greatest thing outside of myself that I could bestow upon these children? It's beyond myself, beyond my wife, beyond man's darkness and evil and the ways of the world and most religions and philosophies. What's, what's the greatest thing? And I thought to myself, well, I'd been raised in a church where I'd heard some of Jesus' things. I'd spent the last years 10 years of my life trying to relearn uh, those things. I've read the Bible a couple of times. I spent uh, time with my wife trying to figure out Jesus' teachings. We vowed that we we raise each other on Jesus' teachings because there was nothing in them that was offensive to either one of us. Uh, man had not intervened. Man, man had not corrupted it. There was nothing that was offensive to the world in those teachings either. So I said to myself, well, what's the greatest of his teachings? What's the greatest of the teachings? The commandment. The last ones, last supper before he was going to go off and be crucified. He said, the greatest commandment is greater than all the others. And all the others are contained within it. And that is that you do unto others, your brothers, in Christ, through his teachings, with love, in the way that you would want done unto you. And I said... Well, within that, if God exists, if Jesus is real, if his plan for our life is real, then within that, all the things of the world, guided by the Creator, must surely exist. And no higher thing could I offer another being. So I won't try to. I won't offer them anything from myself or my family or my wife or even outside of the Gospels other men in the Bible and what they thought and what they wrote, or any man on earth. No leadership of man, no faith will be put in man 
other than Jesus' teachings on that one greatest commandment. And I took a leap of faith and I said, we will do nothing more with the raising of our child than to raise them according to that one greatest commandment. We will put all of our faith in God and Jesus' teachings and that will be how we raise our children. If you're willing to do that, we will have a child if God is willing. And we did. And he was. And the only weakness in our children's life would be our ability to make sure that is the unison thing that we do together. Unison thing, very important. Because two, two spirits come together as one in flesh in a marriage might not necessarily th see things the same. Even if they agree on the same things, how it manifests itself, how it plays out, is always going to be seen differently. <laughs> I, I came up with it, and I said, this is what it needs to be. It was agreed to, but what ramifications did that have? Sometimes it didn't work as perfectly as we wanted to. <clears throat> because, and I'll explain that in a minute. Basically, my interpretation of that would be <clears throat> that obviously there wouldn't be any punishment, there wouldn't be any physical punishment, but not only that, my looking into Jesus' early childhood life, thinking, what kinds of things did he do? He probably made messes, he probably uh, got irate when something wasn't what he wanted. <laughs> Beyond the things of early childhood that the child has little control over until he understands his realm, we don't look at that as sinful nature or a lack or a darkness. We just look at that as a, a being that's coming into management of his own facilities. So we did not condemn them for that. And furthermore, we interpreted the highest commandment to mean they could do nothing wrong other than not following that commandment. To dishonor that commandment would to be dishonorable. Would to be, wor uh, would to be uh, worthy of dishonor. Not worthy of honor. Disrespectful towards others in the world or mother and father or even themselves would be dishonorable because they wouldn't be loving. They wouldn't be doing, through Jesus' teaching, loving others as themselves. They wouldn't be respecting others as themselves. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't be understanding the full concept of meaning of this highest commandment. So they could do no wrong, save the non-observance of that commandment. I took a leap of faith that if God was real, the Creator was working in our life through Jesus and understanding His teachings, we were raising our children according to that and each other and rebuking one another and keeping us in line on the straight and narrow road that <clears throat> that that is what would be necessary to raise our children in the way the Creator would want. And so that's all we elected to do. That is all our children who could not do anything wrong apart from that. And if anything was not to what we thought it should be, we would always point back to that. Rule number one. <laughs> Don't go to rule number two. Refer back to rule number one. So let me just share with you briefly <clears throat> where the difficulties lie. If there's like something where the child's doing something wrong, <clears throat> like in school or something like that, it was my wife's tendency to slip a little bit and give a little bit of correction to them without being 100% within the realm of the guise of that large umbrella of that commandment. And I had to then correct and refer back and be cyclical and say, no, remember now, they're not doing something wrong. <clears throat> there must be another part of the equation that is in, intact with this largest, most important commandment that is not being observed by them in order to cause the effect of what they're doing to be as it is. So let's focus on what that is, not what we see it as in our limited perspective. And so it was always directed back to that, and that's all they were ever taught to think. 
all they were ever taught to operate by. Now we're 20 years down the road. You know what? I think this might have to be a, a three video series. We're 20 years down the road and that's what's happened with a few slips and falls on our part. In a very difficult world. My point of view is that God was willing. My point of view is that Jesus' highest commandment that he re revealed to us from God was the recipe for all good things in the world. All you need is a love. This is where love comes from. Agape love comes from. No reciprocal properties. No longing to say, I love you. Do you love me? No. That's not what it's about. Raising a person raising a child is a more sacred thing than any of that. Anything that you can get back isn't a part of the equation. Things You may come back and they, they're given to you, but that's not a part of the equation. It's added on to if everything else is as it should be. So that's the way we've operated. I may do another video on what the result is, but the result is those beings boy and the girl are in the creator's hands and they will be guided by that highest commandment all the days of their life and anything they choose to do right or wrong will be governed according to that and that's how they'll live and that's how they do live and if I'm not here this is a nice little sum up I've, I've done it a few times but now it's on video. <sighs> Give me some thoughts on how you raise children. Whether you think this is an outlandish approach or not. The proof of the pudding's there. It all worked. Without any doing from me. But only offering what was given to me beyond myself. I'm Paul Roberts. This is Conscious Counseling 101.